Hi, I'm Ruth and I'm speaking to you from the virtual Benedetti sessions. Welcome to our first intermediate viola tutorial. I'm really looking forward to working with you over the course of the next three weeks. We're going to have a combination of tutorials like this one and also live Zoom sectionals and I'm really looking forward to seeing many of you at 4.15pm on Wednesdays. Before we get started, I'd like to encourage you to have a look at the bank of warm-ups that we have on the Benedetti Foundation YouTube channel. If you click the link in the description below, you'll be able to find them. I'd really like to encourage you to do one or two of those every day before you start playing. It's really worth spending a little bit of time getting your body warmed up and also getting to know the other amazing Benedetti Sessions tutors there. Um, I'd also really like to encourage you to remember to keep working with your usual instrumental teacher over the course of the next three weeks. Today's tutorial is all about familiarisation. We're going to be having a look at the Warlock and getting to know it for the first time. Um, although I'll be talking specifically about the Warlock in this tutorial, I hope that you'll find lots and lots of hints and tips here that you can take and apply to other pieces when you get them for the first time. This applies to pieces that you learn on your own with your teacher, but also to the other pieces that we're going to be learning during these virtual Benedetti sessions. One of the pieces that we're going to tackle in the next three weeks is Vaughan Williams' Fantasia on the theme of Thomas Tallis. This is a really wonderful work and one of the most amazing pieces of string orchestra repertoire. It's written for two orchestras and we will be joining the advanced orchestra for this. Um, one of the most wonderful things about being a string player is being able to play in an ensemble with other string players and although that's something that unfortunately we can't do just at the moment, it will be really amazing for us to join together virtually to put this wonderful piece together. We will also be playing an arrangement of Paganini's 24th Caprice for solo violin. This piece could not be more different to the Vaughan Williams and it will be a real technical challenge for us and we have made a really special arrangement for the advanced and intermediate orchestra to come together and play this wonderful work. I really hope that you enjoy working with us over the course of the next three weeks and that you find your learning really fun and um, I'd like to encourage you to be as organised and methodical about your practice as you can possibly be so really try to get yourself into a good routine but I'd also really like to encourage you to experiment and to take some risks. And sometimes when we do experiment and we really push ourselves to improve, we can find that we make some mistakes. But I'm here to tell you that mistakes are okay and mistakes are welcome. And actually, mistakes are often the best possible way that we can learn. So as long as you are trying your best and you're learning from your mistakes, then you will make really great progress. So I hope you enjoy it. As I said before, today's tutorial is all about familiarisation. So we're going to start off with our instruments to really get to know our part and some of the detail that we need to know before we start playing. Uh, Madachins comes from the Capriol Suite by Peter Warlock and this is a suite of dances and this is the last dance, the sword dance. When we get a new piece of music, there are a few fundamental things to consider. So let's start with those. The first thing that I do when I get a new piece of music is that I have a listen to it so that I have an idea of what my end goal is and what I'm aiming towards. So have a listen to the recording that we've made for you of this piece so that you have a sense of what you're working towards. The next thing that's really important to have a look at is the time signature and the key signature and I'm sure this is something that your own teacher says to you all the time. So let's just tackle that now. So first of all we have two four which means we've got two crotchet beats in a bar or quarter note beats in a bar. So that means that the conductor is going to have to give us two beats in. So they're going to give us one, two before we start. And it's really important that you're feeling the pulse when you're practicing. So it's a really good idea for you to count yourself in before you start as well. The other thing that we're going to talk about now is the key signature. So we've got one flat and hopefully you all know that that means that we are in F major. Every scale is a ladder and it's a pattern of tones and semitones and in F major the semitones are between A and B flat and E and F. So let's just take a little bit of time now to play that scale and let's remember where those semitones are. So we're going to play a really slow scale now. Let's use this 
time signature and let's just play a minimum or a half note on each note of the scale. So let's start with three on C, which is F, and we'll start playing after two. One, two. to just feel that really nice pure sound with no vibrato to really help us practice our intonation and to really get into the F major mood. And um, it's also really important to think about the character of the piece before you start playing. Right from the beginning of the process, be thinking about what kind of character you're going to be going for. And I love that Warlock decided to call this piece Sword Dance because I think it's a really fantastic contradiction of a title and I think that really really fits the music so at the beginning we've got this lovely F major dance and it all feels very normal and then as we progress throughout the one minute of music that he's written for us here he starts to add in lots of accidentals and these are notes which aren't in the key signature and the effect of these accidentals is to create dissonance and dissonance is when you hear notes that sound together that are clashing and they don't sound like they should go together that means they're dissonant and we start to get lots of that towards the end and I think that clashing effect makes us think of clashing swords throughout the end of the dance. One other thing I wanted to talk to you about is that Warlock writes divisi quite often, D-I-V and that means that one normally in an orchestra people sit in pairs, the, the string players sit in pairs and the one person would play the upper notes, the ones with the stems pointing upwards, and the other person would play the lower notes with the stems pointing downwards. So I would like for you to choose which one you'd like to learn and make sure that you stick with it once you've decided and learn that. Now there are some places where we have to do some double stopping because he writes two notes at once, but he doesn't write divisi and that means that we've got to play them both. Um, you might find that a little bit tricky to begin with and that's fine. If you do, just choose one note to start off with and then hopefully you can challenge yourself and by the end of the three weeks you might be able to play both. I have one golden rule before you start your practice and that is to start slowly and I can't emphasise this enough. This slow practice is really worth doing and it will really pay off for you in the future. One of the reasons why slow practice is so important is because so often as string players and as musicians we are multitasking and our brains are having to deal with an awful lot of information all at once and when we slow everything down we really give our brains a chance to process all of that detail and it makes it much easier for us to gradually work up to the speed that we want to play at. So for today we are going to mainly think about the bowing and we're going to think about the notes in the left hand. So I'm going to choose a tempo that I think is slow. If it's still a bit too quick for you, you can slow it down even more. That's absolutely fine. And if you do find this tempo a bit easy, then you can start straight away thinking about adding in other details like dynamics or character. So let's start off and play together. So let's get ready. And we're going to just read calmly and carefully through the notes up until A. One, two, one, two. <laughs> a few times if you find that tricky with the D flat coming from the E flat it's quite a stretch. 
So I'm just going to demonstrate the first line of bowing so you have an idea of how it's going to sound when we play it up to speed. <laughs> and neat and precise bowing. So let's just break it down now into its different parts and then we will put them all back together but a bit more slowly. So every single bar is down, up, up, down, up, up. And that happens loads and loads of times throughout the piece. So let's just start with the down bow and let's just practice getting back to the heel because that's gonna be really important. As you can see, I played that whole section just in the lower part of the bow. So we don't want to find ourselves sneaking up towards the tip of the bow because it just gets more and more difficult the further up the bow you get. So let's just practice getting back to the heel. So we're just gonna do a down bow, the little circle, like this. And I'm really using my fingers to help bring the bow back to the heel. So let's play our scale of F like that. Let's start on F. Here we go. And back. Back to the heel. Well done. So the way that we will get back to the heel when we're doing this bowing for real is by using two up bows. And again, we need really flexible fingers for these up bows. So let's just practice on our G and we're going to play down, up, up, down. So we're not going to worry about any notes for the time being. Here we go. So hopefully instead of your circle this time, you are using your up bows to travel back down the bow. If you don't, then you can end up with this kind of an effect where you just get closer and closer to the tip and it gets harder and harder. So make sure that you're using your two up bows to travel back. Let's try a scale of F using that bowing. Here we go. It's really worth us trying the second octave as well. So let's carry on and go one octave higher. Here we go. two octaves in preparation for matachins. Before our sectional on Wednesday, it would be great if you had a chance to go through all of the notes, let's say up to letter B, with that bowing and at that speed. So this speed is absolutely fine. At the moment, I'd really just like you to focus on the accuracy and the neatness and really getting the notes really well learned in your fingers because then we'll be able to focus on all of the interesting things like the dynamics and the character of the music. As you set up to practice this on your own, remember mistakes are welcome. It's all a part of the process and they're really going to help us to learn. So really enjoy experimenting with this movement and trying something new. The point of this first week is to familiarise yourself with the music. So take plenty of time to calmly and slowly go through your part. And I'm really looking forward to doing that with you on Wednesday. Make sure you don't go too quickly too soon. That's really important. And um, 15 minutes a day of practice is a really good starting point. We would love to see how you're getting on with your practice. So please um, post clips of your practice with the hashtag Benedetti sessions. And you can also post it to practice with Ruth so that I can see how you're getting along. Remember, it doesn't have to be the finished article. I'm really keen to see how your progress is going and how you're getting on with it and even what your difficulties are as well. So please feel free to post those up for me so that I can help. And I'll really look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday for our live Zoom sectional. See you then. <laughs>